In a food testing experiment, students randomly blinded 25 taste testers as they ate a piece of toast with margarine. They asked participants whether they ate butter on their toast. 16 out of 25 of them said yes. So here they randomly had 25 people taste test a piece of toast and they put margarine on it and they asked them if it was real butter. Two thirds of them, 18 out of, or 16 out of 25 of them said yes. Then they gave the other randomly selected 25 taste testers a piece of toast with butter on it instead of margarine. They gave them real butter and they asked the same question. This time as if 16 out of 25, 19 out of 25 said yes. So more people correctly answered yes with real butter than with margarine. We want to see uh, how statistically significant these results really are. Our first question here, uh, part A says, what is the explanatory variable in the scenario and what are the treatments or the options? Uh, if we're doing a food testing experiment here, it looks like that we are testing uh, eating a piece of toast with margarine versus eating a piece of toast with uh, actual butter. So really the explanatory variable is what is on your toast, the two options being margarine or butter. Now what is measured for each individual? The response in each case is whether people think they just ate butter on their toast. So they asked the participant whether they just ate butter. Uh, and in the first case, 16 said yes. And then the second one, they had uh, 19 out of 25 with the exact same question. So did you just eat butter? Uh, and so we have butter versus margarine uh, as the explanatory and whether they think they ate butter as the response. So is that response categorical or is that quantitative? Since the uh, response for any given individual in the study is, yes, I ate butter, no, I did not, that's going to be categorical. So we have two different treatments, uh, margarine versus butter, and the explanatory variable is what is on the toast. The response variable is what they think they ate on their toast. Number three, uh, part C here says if it is quantitative and it is not, so we are going to assume that we are uh, going to skip that one. So let's cross that out. So based on the last two responses, what type of interval or test will you perform in Stackey? Well, whenever you have a categorical response, we're going to perform a difference of two proportions. So it's either going to be a test of the difference of two proportions or a confidence interval for the difference of two proportions. And it says the next one, next two questions, what is the null hypothesis? Use your correct symbols and what is the alternative hypothesis? And make sure that there's no intentional direction here. So for our null hypothesis with two proportion, we always have the same null, that uh, one population proportion, proportion is equal to the other proportion. So P is equal to P. But we always want to label each of these P's so we know which way they refer to. So P of uh, getting margarine on your toast should be equal to P of getting actual butter on your toast. So P of margarine is equal to P of butter. And I uh, s uh, shortened them to P of M and P of B. The alternative is going to be very similar. We're going to have uh, proportion for the margarine and we're going to have proportion for the butter. So PM and PB. And we have to decide if one of these is predicted to be bigger or if it's just going to be a not equals test. Reading the questions again, it doesn't look like there's an expectation that butter is going to be better uh, or margarine is going to be better. So we're just going to say not equals. Now, if I were designing this study, I guess I would predict that butter would do better at appearing to be butter. Um, but because there is nothing in the problem that says the researchers thought that, we're going to always just go with the safe assumption that the two uh, different things on your toast are not equal to one another. Next thing we're going to do is hop over to stat key. 
and we're going to go and perform our hypothesis test to see what our p-value is. So we go to the test of the difference of proportions. And in here we're going to edit our data. And regardless of what we had typed in before, we have a 16 out of 25 for our group 1. And we have a 19 out of 25 for our group 2. So the 16 out of 25 uh, represents getting margarine, the 19 out of 25 represents actually getting butter, and how many people thought that they got butter in each of those two groups. We generated a bunch of different samples. Since the null hypothesis is that the two proportions are equal, the null that the, is that the difference between the two proportions is going to be zero. We have a sample difference, if we look at our two sample means, of point uh, one two, and it's a negative one. So it's a p negative point one two. Since we said a not equals tests, we're going to do two tail. We're going to adjust this to negative point one two. And you'll see that we get point two six nine on either side, or something very close to that. So generate a few extra samples. And whenever we do a two tail test, we add them together. And we're looking at something higher than 0.5. We're looking at something 0.538 in this particular example. And a p-value of 0.538 is not statistically significant. But let's go ahead and write it down. 0.538. Next question is whether it's an observational study or an experiment, and then what conclusions can we make? Well, it is randomly blinding 25 taste testers and then randomly uh, blinding the other 25 taste testers. So there's two separate groups. Each of them is blinded and randomly assigned. So it appears to be an experiment, but when you have a 0.538 p-value, it really doesn't matter. We conclude that there's no difference between the two treatments, between receiving margarine and receiving butter, and being able to tell if it's actually butter. Final two questions deal with confidence intervals. So it says the estimated difference between the two groups using a 95% interval, and then interpreting that interval. So we go back to our tests, we look at the data that we typed in, and we're going to type the same data into a confidence interval. So 16 out of 25 and 19 out of 25. We're going to choose confidence interval for the difference in proportions. And when we pull that up, we're going to edit our data and we're going to get a 16 out of 25 for our first group and our 19 out of 25 for the second group. Again, if you flipped groups 1 and 2, as long as you're consistent and know what each group stands for, it's not a big deal. So it is personal preference when it comes to that part. So again, we have our data inside, we generate our samples, and we're going to choose the middle 95% to be our confidence interval. So we use the two tail here. And for the confidence interval, the middle 95% is between negative 0.36 and positive 0.12 approximately. Thus, you are 95% confident that the difference in the proportion of people who think they have butter uh, from the margarine group to the actual butter group is between negative 36% and positive 12%. In other words, uh, because this confidence interval does span zero, there are people on both sides uh, saying 36% more likely to predict they have butter when they actually have butter to 12% more likely to predict they have butter when they actually have margarine. Uh, this confidence interval really is not particularly conclusive, so we can't conclude a whole lot from it.